Let the attack of the awesome begin. Hello and welcome to Attack of the Awesome. And we are interviewing Benzai. Hey. And the French guy who looks best in women. <laughs> the, Fren the Frenchy. Uh, I'm your host, Mike, and along with me are my co-hosts, JJ, Rosenhacker, and Ruby. Blackness, Australianess, and who gives a crap about Rosen? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got okay. some questions. No, we don't have any questions. Yes, we do, JJ. Oh, cool. <laughs> really, we just brought him on here just so we can, like, just, like, gloat him and just, like, praise him for everything he's ever done. Oh, We're sweet. not worthy. Damn, We're not worthy. Time. You know, there, there are a bunch of things that I've done and I'm not especially proud of, so I don't know if you want to praise me for that. I have a picture of him in my apartment. He even signed that. Yeah, actually, I think I, uh, I, think I remember signing stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, you did. All right. Ro Ruby, you sound like the biggest fangirl, I swear to God. <laughs> That's awful, I know. <laughs> Okay. The yes, you should all go and see him. He's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, uh, I'm always glad to get fangirls then, so, uh, and, and Ruby, like, if it makes you feel any better, I think you're not the worst, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. All right, the, let's start off the questions, and the first question is, uh, let's pretend that you're drunk. Okay. Assuming that you aren't already drunk, what kind of American food do you crave? Why castle? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if I was drunk right now, things that I'm just done eating, so I'm not. I'm absolutely not hungry right now, so I cannot imagine. Uh, if I was super drunk, I think I'd say let's go to Wendy's. Um, yes. You know, I had a fantastic burger at Wendy's, <laughs> and I was like, shit, like, why are we? Uh, why do we keep going to fucking um, Dennis? Like, what the hell? <laughs> it's the worst. It's the, it's the, people keep telling you it's the absolute worst, and yet you you, you would always end up there. So um, definitely, I'd say let's go to Wendy's if I was uh, drunk out of my ass right now. <laughs> what hamburger did you actually eat at Wendy's? Was it the Baconator? No, no, no. It, it was a double stacker. Mm. Like... That was like one dollar. It was good. I can't believe none of us have made the Royale with cheese joke yet. What's that? Okay, the That's Royale the with cheese question. doesn't exist. Uh, just, uh, just for your information, guys. You never ask for a little Royale with cheese or whatever else. It's just called a Royale cheese. So there's no with in between that. And uh, I just I, actually, it's funny because I was pointing that out to myself um, this afternoon. I was like, yeah, I was in McDonald's, and I was like. Well, but that's so stupid to make an entire scene that everybody's going to remember about, like, you know, something so um, futile and, uh, and uninteresting as, like, how you call McDonald's in France. And, and you don't even get it accurately. I, I accurate. So you're just, like, uh, if, if you want to pinpoint something that's, you know, not very interesting to be, pay homage to a um, new wave film where people will just talk random nonsense, like, at least get the facts right, which is the royal... Which cheese doesn't exist. There you go. So let's oh, not joke yeah. about it. Yeah, Rosie. Fanboy. <laughs> yeah, listen, you know, you listen to him. French people do know about cheese. They have very good cheese. Like Swiss. Indeed. Yes. <laughs> and provolone. And you don't. You just have burgers and fries and... We have American cheese. We have a cheese named after America. That's that's how awesome we are. <laughs> All right, Ruby, would you like to read the second question? Yes. Uh, wait, 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 wait! Before you start, yeah. read it, read it in, uh, read it in, um, uh, uh, German, and see if uh, Benzai understands it. <laughs> now I have to translate. Um. Oh God, I have to translate that. I just, I, I'm like more amazed by Ben because he speaks Sie, haben so many languages. Have you ever heard it said that Swede comes uh, back or where you caught off guard? What's that in German? 
<laughs> I don't know. There is an expression. Uh, yeah, well, but I had heard that uh, Sweet was coming back previously. Obviously, uh, actually, I knew about it. So I understood, I understood the first part of the question. Which I, I think that's what, 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 that's what you wanted to know, right? If I knew about, like, his uh, comeback previously, or uh, if I was caught off guard when he came, actually came into the picture. Right? It would have it been funny if, like, you were just standing there, like, and you just, like, had, like, an empty expression just seeing Sway. But I guess that, like, I've, I haven't been on the site for a long time. You guys were enemies back then? Oh, well, it was actually kind of funny because uh, Will is not a guy that I talked to uh, a lot. Even back then, like, you know, I would randomly talk to him, but, like, not, like, we wouldn't hang out on Skype or whatever. But sometimes we'd exchange a few words, and, um, but most of the time, actually, it was a big surprise to see uh, how he would play with my footage, like, because I never sent him anything. So basically, uh, um, except like maybe at the and at the very end, just right before it would leave. But originally, how it all started is just they randomly decided to feature clips of my video and make a joke about it. And so I decided to answer that, and um, and then like it kind of caught on by itself, really. And um, and I re remember it. Um, it's it was pretty much like when the first crossover feud, whatever else. Um, you know, I don't know how you could call it, but it was it was good to like it was one of the first time actually I I think you'd see people interacting between in between videos over uh, over two or three or four videos with an actual some sort of continuity uh, which was actually absolutely all, all over the place but um but then so like we just, we we took we would take jabs at each other but it never it was never really like planned there was no grand scheme behind it kind of like you know Spoonie and Linkara do right now but. Uh, it was all in good fun, though, uh, and so um, so we're not enemies, or even whatever. I'm not sure what we were, but like I don't know. When I wanted to uh, poke fun at someone, I would usually pick Suede, uh, because that's what people uh, tended to enjoy back then, and I knew he, he wouldn't mind because he was already doing it with me, and that's pretty much how it happened. And actually, uh, that's the reason why I first got to really speak to Spoon is that uh, at some point Suede. I uh, wouldn't do the sketch where he wakes up next to me uh, for my uh, drunk Halloween party. And so I had to ask Spoonie that it was, at, I think, pretty much the first time I had to ask uh, Spoonie something over Skyler. It was like, you know, can you just uh, be like uh, waking up in a pimp outfit and say, oh, you know, that was intense or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but eventually he got, he, got, uh, he got it back to me because... Then he said, okay, but I'll do that right now, but you owe me. And so uh, then he came back and asked uh, that I would do, like, some sexy, stupid, silly dance. And that's the one that you've seen in uh, Phantasmagoria 2 that people still really remember this, to this day. Ruby, are you fantasizing right now? Yeah, a bit. I mean, Spoonie in, in, pimp, in a pimp's costume, that's fucking sexy. That's like man in women's clothes <laughs> or dark in his... Link costume or, you know, the the giant cucumber in that one guy's trousers or whatever. Wario? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Or was his name Justin? I don't remember. <laughs> oh. Anyway, um, Rosie. I mean, like, we could go on forever about, like, how Ruby is, like, obsessing over, like, all oh, the boys yeah, and whatnot. Yeah, that guy with the glasses, the porn yeah. <laughs> That's what you guys should do for a fourth year anniversary. Actually, actually this was debated uh, on the set of the third anniversary. We're like, okay, you know what? Um, if next time we cannot shoot it in uh, outdoors for some reason because, you know, like the weather was not cooperating, why don't we just hire a bunch of porn actors for close-ups? But we have us play the story of a, a big Dead Guy with Glasses porn movie. Be very silly and all, but then people can actually like you know have a fiction where um, all the crew of Dagger Glasses is just fucking each other because this would actually get a lot more attention than Suburban Nice. <laughs> it probably would. The thing yeah, is, though, yeah, I know. <laughs> oh. Because I mean, it's, it's it's like it's like what they say in um in a. Uh, Zach and Miri make a porno. Like, if, you know, like, for example, like, if people kind of lost interest in that guy, let's say, let's say like, you know, the, the, yeah, they lost, they, they, they've lost interest in about, two, after two years, but then they hear on Twitter that, 
oh my god, the fourth anniversary is just them just fucking each other, like, for two hours long, then you're going to come back to the side and check this out for yourself. And so, like, this would this would actually be a massive hit. You know, the creepy thing about that is that there's only really four girls, or at least, like, six girls probably involved in the site, and the rest are just men. Oh, no, there's a lot more, I think. Uh, okay, if you count Diamanda Hagen, that's just brand new. And oh, yeah, she she's has- new. And she has her sidekick, or like um, her with her, uh, you can count my girlfriend. You can count Linkara's girlfriend. You can count uh, 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 Lindsay's, who has like an entourage of uh, like two or even three girls. Um, you have like Mars girl. You have Obscure Slooper. You got roses. You get yeah roses. <laughs> um, I told you, get, you, not you got Holly. You get, you, know, you get like some people that work behind the scene, like uh, Holly the cat. Um, you got, I don't know, and, and, and on Blistered Thumbs, we got, like, I think two or three other females. Uh, yeah, so, uh, Renry. I love Yeah, that. we got Renry, we got, um, uh, Vero Velvet, so, uh, we, we got, we got a ton, actually, um, the, the, the sausage to pie ratio is a lot better than it was, um, in the early days. A lot better. Ah, oh, crap. We're going off topic. We're going off topic. Sorry about that. Rosie, read the next question. <laughs> uh, okay. The obligatory, are you a fan of Doctor Who question? Uh, if so, who is your um, favorite and least favorite doctor? Okay. My favorite, I think, is the only one I've ever seen, and I don't even know which one it was. Does that answer your question to am I a fan of Doctor Who? He's just like me. He's like he probably like seen a couple of episodes. And... Yeah, no, I've seen one episode. It was the Weeping Angel. It was pretty cool, but then, uh, yeah, no, I. It's not. I don't know. Like I'm not into it. I've only seen Daleks in Manhattan, and I think uh, they had the same doctor. So. And it... wait. Um. So like you weren't like a fan of Doctor Who. Do you get like that question a lot? Um, not really. I mean, like, I just tend to ignore uh, when Twitter is being spammed with the uh, Doctor Who stuff, and I don't watch the Doctor Who reviews on that guy's glasses, even though I should. But I think, I think I've seen one though uh, when it was about like the crappiest episodes in the the, the series before the new one, um, with like uh, where the monster was like designed by a kid who won a contest and it was very stupid. One from Nat. What'd you say, Rosie? One from Nat. Love and monsters. Oh Nash. Yeah, yeah. It was it was the the one from Nash exactly. Uh, so that's about the only thing Doctor Who related I've seen on the side, and there's a ton. Even I don't know. I'm not a big fan. It's like people um, in Europe sometimes like get obsessed with uh, My Little Pony <laughs> these yeah, these days, and uh, actually, uh, I'm not into it either. And I, apparently, I'm not part of the cool kid. <laughs> hey, be different because that's what makes the cooler kids. Yep, exactly. Yeah, a pony. Except Rosie. Rosie, you're a fanboy, and you pretty much follow everybody. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, I think it's time for me to ask a freaking question. Uh, uh, any attempt in, in improving working on Suburban Nights? Like, did you, like, spice up your character in any way? Um... When uh when shooting several nights, there's uh, this process that Doug always has that he had already in Kikassia. It was basically, <coughs> okay, guys, you've, you've seen the script. You know what your line is. <coughs> I'm sorry. And uh, so we'll do it. I'll give you direction to how I'd like you to say a line. But then if you get a better idea or if you get an ID at all, you just, uh, we'll just go for it. But afterwards, and but keep in mind that we're on a tight schedule. So we're not going to take, we're going to spend a day just on your line, so uh, we'll do my version, we'll do your version, and uh, and I'll see uh, I'll see what happens on on the editing table. But so basically, we're allowed to say, okay, maybe I'll see it like that. Uh, I think really what what I ended up adding onto the Conan character was the French accent, which they were expecting anyway. Sometimes they forced it. Uh, for example, like when I say "crom," uh, I I force my French accent because I, I like the, the sound of R. It's more it's more foreign than. Um, than the way um, Charles and Edgar would say. But apart from that, I don't think there's been much improv on my on my end, really, um, because there was not much range for it. Uh, I had, like, most of the time, I had one-liners except for that monologue, 
and monologue was done uh, was a recorded voice. So, um, so I, I basically like I was just reading a text. So, um, so no, uh, in terms of Conan, it was not much improv. But actually, if you check out the backgrounds, because I'm I'm like doing a lot of reaction shots, and I tend to uh, to always do like um, a surprise or silly face, uh, even when I'm far in the background, like in the in the first video. So. Um, I don't know, yeah, I think people should tell me, like, what kind of, uh, if my Conan is different from uh, what someone else would have done, for example, I don't know. <laughs> You're obviously not, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, of course. Mm. What the, I mean, what is he, I mean, like, isn't he, um, Austrian? Not Austrian. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, he was? Oh, he was. Yeah. Oh, okay, then I got yeah. that right. Well, you're obviously not Austrian. Yeah, no, I'm not. Can you do an Austrian accent? Well, I don't know. Um, oh wait, a German accent? I'm not sure because Austrian technically isn't a language. It's just a it's a it's, country. It's the yeah, accent. Uh, but they have like they have a diff. I think they have a different uh, a different accent than the pure German. But um, really, uh, because like uh, what's for sure is that Schwarzenegger doesn't have a German accent. He has an Austrian accent. Um, yes, he does. He has Styrian accent because in Austria we all have have different accents. When a a guy from Styria talks English, he has a different accent than mine, for example. I'm from Vienna. They have a complete different way of talking. In Austria, you have so many different dialects, also sounding completely different. So he, it, I also realized that when uh, people in Austria are making fun about Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, <laughs> the Syrian people are always the best in making fun of uh, his kind of way in speaking English because they have the same kind of dialect. So, hey, actually, you should you should just ask Rubina about these questions. Exactly. After an accent, definitely. This is why we hired Ruby because she's the good foreigner and better than a Scottish chick that we used to have, but we shall not name her. <laughs> okay. All right. Moving on to the next question. I Read want it, Mike. I want to know if you're enjoying some summertime dude p bootay. What? <laughs> um, actually, uh, I got in contact for I get in contact sporadically with the author of the Benzai Gay Rap videos. Uh, well, not the videos, but the songs because I do the videos afterwards. And usually, the process behind these is just that the guy show up on Skype. Uh, sometimes drunk out, of his, drunk out of his ass. It's like, dude, like, I just done recording this. It's awesome, isn't it? It's like, it's like a rap about me, like, sucking dude's cock or whatever. And, um, and I'm like, well, this is hilarious. I'll try to cram this into the video somehow. Um, and I eventually do. Actually, I have right now a, a straight Benzai rap. Uh, that I need to make the music video out of, and actually I should hurry because apparently the guy is already working on a summertime gay rap 2011. Uh, so uh, <laughs> you definitely can expect uh, something <laughs> uh, absolutely outrageous and gay um, before the end of summer, but I think next week or the week after that, there'll be destroyed Benzai rap already, which is actually pretty cool. Where can we like find this at on your website or on Tigwatch? Oh uh, well, you'll find that on that guy with glasses. Me, okay. actually, people like these so much and tend to remember them a lot more than they remember the video it's from. That I think I'll just post them as standalone videos because that's what people end up um, wanting. Actually, I think the uh, the Benzai Gay Rap, the newest version on YouTube, is more popular than the review it was originally from, which was the Beverly Hills uh, review. I think people just like random bits of like songs from their favorite creators, like how uh, Lil Karibo does songs and whatnot. I guess, but yeah. I'm, I'm I'm not the one behind the songs, really. It's just that the guy is so uh, he thinks secretly madly in love with me, so <laughs> he just does these songs about me being like um, uh, a big uh, a big gay dude who, who enjoy uh, lots of guys. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of guys, or speaking of girls liking guys, or gays liking guys, whatever. Ruby, read the next question, because I think yeah, you're going to enjoy this. One person wants to know, my question, inspired by Linkara or Liz's recent commentary on Suburban Nights, why the hell did Ben bring so many condoms with him? Mm. <laughs> that sounds really personal. <laughs> 
No, I'm like, right. no, I'm just surprised they mentioned it. Uh, did they mention that in their, uh, yeah. in their commentary? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually funny because uh, condoms were apparently a big deal. Um, I don't know. To me, it's normal to uh, carry on condoms uh, whenever you go, um, and not especially for yourself. But you know, like uh, I think AIDS is serious. It's serious fucking business. So uh, when you're gonna be like, you know, uh, uh, spending like a week uh, where you know you don't know where you can, you'll be able to find uh, some sort of like you know emergency um, uh, medics, and I think that. Uh, uh, condoms are a big part of that too. Um, you want to have these uh, in case you know, like um, you got friends or whatever who actually uh, are in need for uh, such um, such uh, medics, really. So uh, it's not. I, I don't know. To me, it's absolutely no big deal. I travel. There's condom in my suitcase. It's not. It's not that I plan on like. Uh, you know what? I I came back with uh, not as many condoms as like uh, as I went there. Oh. And, as I originally went, and because people actually, uh, it, it's it's uh, that's actually the funny thing is that, man, like, why the fuck do you have so many condoms on you? Can I get? Can I have two? <laughs> <laughs> and so people would just pick them up. Uh, so you know what? <laughs> that means that actually there's a need for condom even when you don't need them for yourself. There's always uh, you always need to have condoms on you. Uh, it should be like I don't know. Um, I don't know, but it's it's a mandatory thing to to have in these times where um, AIDS is still run rampant in the 21st century. This is serious fucking business, and to me it was no big deal. I don't know if it's because I'm French, but you know what? The Americans they really like whenever you mention something that is somehow related to PP parts, they giggle and uh, and think it's very funny. Whereas it can be actually uh, serious medical business. There you go. You know, if I was you to answer that question, I would have just said, uh, I don't want little uh, baby Ben's running around. That's why. <laughs> That'd be adorable to animate. I wish somebody would go out and draw that. <laughs> draw them with little Conan outfits. Actually, someone drew a shibi Conan Benzai and was very cute. It's on DeviantArt somewhere. Uh, if you actually go to my DeviantArt, which is just Benzai, uh, you can check out in my favorites and you'll find the... Uh, You'll find it's to be Conan Benzai art. I think the Benzai pony pr proves that people will draw anything. Yeah. Rule 34. Okay. Um, blah, 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 blah. Rosie, Rosie. Ro ring around the Rosie. Uh, read the next question. <laughs> uh, seeing as how much you like your uh, French Conan costume, are you going to see the new Conan the Barbarian movie? There's a new movie? Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, man, catch up with the time, yeah. Yeah, there's a new Conan movie that's uh, that's soon to be out, and I'll definitely go watch it, uh, maybe just for the sake of reviewing, even though I know for a fact that Brad or Spoonie or even, like, uh, uh, Doug are going to review it day one, but I don't know, like, uh, some people, a lot of people really like my analysis on the first Conan movie, and then, like, what I had to say, and uh, the fact that I was Conan. So maybe I'll do, you know what, a fun little review as uh, Conan reviews Conan. But, but I know you, you know, I know for a fact that you're going to see the Conan outfit in a brand new series, which has, should be a three-parter. And it's going to be a collaboration with someone else on the site. Um, it's going to be pretty uh, pretty funny, pretty exciting. And, uh, and um, it's going to be not a review material. It's going to be an original little mini-series. So you can look forward to that. And then I'll probably sell it on eBay because I like money. Dude, right. <laughs> Still da deep down inside, everybody is a money whore. Yeah. All right. Uh, I dare you, Mike, to buy it. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. It's going to fit me. Uh-huh. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever considered doing a crossover with both Spoonie and the Cinema Snob? Well... Uh, I like them both very much. Um, uh, I, I don't know. Um, I, I guess you would count. The, uh, it doesn't really count that I did a, an hour-long podcast with his uh, wife, uh, Jillian, which I salute, by the way. She's uh, lovely. And um, But actually, yeah, I think I should actually try to get Brad and Spoonie somewhere to collab with me. Uh, I don't know exactly what. Um but maybe for fourth year anniversary, I'll think of something so we can actually be together on the set. Uh, if not, um, maybe there should be something that could uh, tie us together 
uh, which I don't know could what it could be. Maybe you know what? Maybe uh, after the Conan, the, the Conan movies out, maybe we'll do uh, a, a three disc uh, three per, uh, three way discussion really about on the um, the the new Conan movie, and that that'd be a good discussion, I think. I hope it doesn't suck. I'm talking about the movie, not you guys' conversation. Well, yeah, I hope it doesn't suck, but uh, I already have my expectations. My hopes pretty low, so I, I at least I know I won't be too disappointed. Even if it's all I ask is that it's a little better than uh, Clash of the Titans. Really, it's, it's, at, uh, at this point, it's it's all I'm hoping for. How was Clash of the Titans anyway? I'm sorry if I'm like getting off track, but how it was, was that? Freaking, it was freaking terrible. Really? It looked, yeah, it looked like this uh, old old school uh, Zelda commercial. Like with uh, you know, like uh, the sets was all like all very fake looking and very eighties stupid lighting and uh, and costumes as little cheap. Uh, I don't know, like everything sounds absolutely. It, it looks like an action a commercial for action figures that that you, you don't know which, but you know, oh, it looks absolutely terrible. It looks like a bad music video. I don't know, like it's a. Uh, it's not even a movie. It's uh, it's just a stupid fest. Um, it even makes. Even when they released the Kraken. Yeah, even when they released the Kraken, which is, at, I swear to God, straight out of Gears of War. It's terrible. The design is absolutely uh, out there, and um, and Liam Neeson as Zeus is absolutely terrible. Uh, you, you, I don't know. I, I I love Greek mythology, and to see it like totally Hollywoodized. Per se, it's a, it's absolutely terrible. It's a, it's a disgrace. Really, the movie shouldn't exist. It's bringing nothing to the table, literally, because the movie in the movie pretty much nothing happens. There's no, it's trying too hard. It looks like they crammed up a bunch of cutscenes from whatever funky game, and they call it a movie. It's terrible. I mean, like when you said that, it's like one of those old commercials that you'd see for action figures. Like they just exactly. like they make the commercial look so good, but it has nothing to do with the toys. No, exactly. I mean, it looks like a commercial for the uh, old tabletop game uh, Hero Quest. Really, like it, it would look like these. Like you know, I don't know. Some, uh, one Spoonie reviewed like you know this uh, tabletop uh, game that was Eric Fantasy based, where you had a VHS. With like very cheesy effect and costumes, that's basically what um, Clash of the Titan is. I mean, Sam Worthington actually apologized for his performance in this movie because it sucks. It's terrible. <laughs> I want to see this movie now, just so I can say how bad it is. <laughs> All okay, right. moving on to the next question. Turn. Yeah. Is it my turn? It's my turn. All right. Yay. Okay. How did you get to wear the Conan costume, and was it uncomfortable wearing it? Did you feel embarrassed or any type of way? Okay, um, the Conan costume, actually, I have no idea. Um, I'm not sure why Doc Picnic would be Conan. I think because they, 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 they were like, okay, you know, uh, in every fantasy group, we need a warrior. Like, a guy would be a tank, even just for the sake of, like, being, like, you know, um, um, the fighter, the guy with the... Yeah, just to be coherent with the fact that we're pretty much LARPing in this game, uh, in this movie or whatever. And, um, and so uh, I think it's because at some point I said to Doug, uh, yeah, he's maybe he's seen like Conan on his Conan review, or he's seen my Conan review, or he's seen that I really like Conan, I don't know, but I expect to be Conan, I didn't specifically ask for it, but you know what, it was, I, it was fine by me, or, you, you know, like at least... Um, at least I know that the costume is going to look uh, okay. And um, and actually, originally, I was supposed to have, like, um, a fake chest, you know, like, fake muscles. Um, but it ended up, like, being actually very uncomfortable. Like, I literally couldn't move. Like, even walking, the whole thing would fall off. Um, so I said to Doug, you know, Doug, it's very uncomfortable. Can I, can't I just do it topless? And he said, okay, but you might freeze your ass off, and he was right. I froze my ass off. Actually, I just posted on my site uh, a picture that will fuel, like, so many fan fictions or whatever, or fantasy. It's uh, me uh, hugging a lot uh, Lindsay because she had this big dress, so she's pretty, we're pretty much, like, cuddling under a big cape uh, uh, because she's actually keeping me warm because I was freezing my ass off in, uh, under Chicago wing. 
uh, and so yeah, it was very uncomfortable, uh, but uh, not for the costume itself. It was the weather that was not cooperating. Uh, I ended up actually being like um, more tanned when I came back than I uh, than I came into uh, to the country because. Um, because I was under the sun and all, so I don't know. It was both cool and not cool because I really liked my costume. I paid actually. Uh, I invested some money into it, and and I and I ended up really liking the way it looked. But the problem was really the weather, really. Yeah. So basically, if you guys were like shooting like on a hot summer day, you would love wearing that costume. Exactly. Get to be all sweaty and manly while everybody else is burning up in their costumes and whatnot. Exactly, but I ended up being the one just like rubbing his nipples uh, all, all day uh, just to keep warm or and jumping around and bunny hopping to keep my legs warm all the time. Didn't uh, you do a dance? Yeah, uh, it's actually on my vlog. You can see me like just hopping and dancing and doing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And, <laughs> Yeah, I want to just, see you bunny hopping in a Conan costume. That must be well. So you, you can just watch my uh, my vlog of Frog in Chicago again. It's on the website. It's basically that. It's just me bunny hopping and telling the camera that this is my routine. Whenever the camera the camera is not rolling, I'm jumping everywhere to keep warm. Bunny hopper, bunny hopping Conan. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, who's next? Is it you, Mike? Uh. I think it's either Rosenhacker's or uh, Ruby's turn. And All right, Ruby, Ruby. Yeah. What was the funniest moment shooting Suburban Nights for you personally? I know personally. Um, okay, what was the funniest? I really liked watching uh, Phyllis' performance. Really, it was always very funny. I remember laughing my ass off after um, they shot the thing where he said, "I can't kill Bennett." Or can I, or something? And and Bennett had like the perfect reaction. Uh, I thought this was uh, really really funny. I think I think the best time was actually when the uh, when we shot the um, you know when Spoonie's team actually comes back to save the day at the very end. Because I don't know when we were shooting that, I could actually get the feel of the um, the epic feel going on, and I thought, okay, you know what. Uh, we got a movie there because I think this is awesome just shooting it so people are going to love like the entire movie uh, you know like uh, it was not just my team just shooting like uh, a few things a few scenes in the wood like I had like a bit it, it had a bigger scale on the set so I was like okay no I'm, I'm getting this now like you know I'm getting the big picture into my head so I'm realizing that this is going to be uh, freaking awesome which was uh, which was very reassuring because the weather had been terrible so far. So when we had this big shooting day with everybody on the set, it was very heartwarming, and you know, like it got it got us pumped to to finish the whole thing. So, like, did you think like the idea of like shooting the LARPing or just like the whole thing in general was just like going to be lame or something? No, no, it's not bad. But uh, I don't know if you've seen my vlog, but weather was uh, real shit. And so after the first day, it was so exhausting and freezing and uh, and, and overall like very long uh, that people would come at, come back broken. That um, dog was like, "Holy shit!" Like you know, I'm putting this guy through a lot. Um, it's uh, it's crazy, you know. Like and and tomorrow we cannot shoot because it's going to be raining. And then like the other day, we already know that the other day we can't shoot either. Uh, what are we going to do? So a lot of people were uh, you know like a bit depressed by you know like. It, it did not start very well, and it ended up like being freaking awesome. And so, um, so that's why uh, uh, that's why I'm saying that that it really cheered us up to have this big, or at least personally to me, like it was very cool to see like the big picture, um, because we shot the uh, the climax before the end of uh, of part um, before Team B uh, had to do like other scenes. So, uh, but we didn't think that it'd be lame. No. Uh, don't get me wrong, but you know what? Uh, it was like when when you only when you you've only see so far like your scenes, you don't you don't get exactly like you know uh, okay, but how is this gonna be like the whole picture or you know like uh, it was good to to see like the the whole thing. Um, it was the clo let's say that when you shoot, when shooting with the whole group, you you could actually get a taste of the final product 
Whereas when you're just shooting with a small team, you don't get that. that. So it's like the feeling of just like isolation, but then when like the whole thing comes together, it's like, oh, this is such a great movie. Exactly, yeah. yeah, I I think that's just like how it feels when you just shoot movies like piece by piece. And then you put all the pieces together. Yeah. Totally. All right, Rosen Hacker. uh, Rosie. Not the all right. Just before you add, what um, the question? Oh yes, uh, from from Rocky Balboa two one one. Did you ever find your Conan wig? No. Yeah. Uh, obviously, because I have it uh, as Conan. Uh, when Conan announces that he's going to different events. Uh, in my in one of my uh, uh, latest videos, and also as Veronique in my gem video, so uh, I found it was at home actually. Oh uh, my god! I love when you played uh, when you played Veronique in one of Spoonie's videos. It um, yeah. It was the review of that very strange game in you, you played the, me, yeah. the the French girl that was so funny. That's yeah, one of part, my party mania. That was a great review. Overall favorite videos. This one video of Spoonie. It's so cool. Yeah, but actually this time for the gem video, I actually shaved to be Veronique, so I, she's not as hairy. <laughs> that would have been funnier, actually. <laughs> yes, that's why um, I think there is a, a comment of Spoonie where he said, um, "Ben, please leave all your hair on. I want a really." Harry French girl. <laughs> yeah, people want French girl to be Harry, which I have no idea why. But... <sighs> Sorry. Yeah. It's, it's good to see that you're actually enjoying. <laughs> yeah. You're actually enjoying talking to a man about being Harry. Yeah. Uh, at least when I think of. Harry French girls, that's, you know, like men in skirts. We already had that. I think I like men and women being mixed up or something. I think I'm pervert. We, all, we all know what you got a fed for. <laughs> uh, why didn't they keep the running gag in uh, Suburban Nights with Benzai coming out of from people's crotches? Oh, um... You mean like, wait, did they keep that or wait, oh, didn't I, they? Why oh, didn't? Sorry. Uh, I don't know. Um, originally, this came to be because uh, everybody gathered in the main room and uh, they started shooting, and they kind of, uh, and I was just on the side, just drinking coffee, watching them go, because Doug hadn't called me to just tell me where to go, so I just watched them, and they started shooting stuff. I was like, okay, then I'll just wait for Doug to to tell me when I'll I'll come to the picture and. And then he sees me popping out, and he's like, Dan, what the fuck? Like, you were not here the whole thing? You're the whole time? How the hell do you do? we introduce you? And so people are like, well, we're going to do a shot where Benzai comes in, otherwise he's just going to teleport in there. And so I was like, I suggested myself that I'd pop out of um, uh, Brad's crotch, and it was very funny, actually. I was actually kind of creeped out. I was like, what the hell did he come from? Yeah. <laughs> this was pretty funny. I, I think I think you can expect an update because I know this has been done where I just pop out um, I just pop out my head and I said, there's a snake on my head. <laughs> and, and Brad just like laughed his ass out. It was pretty cool. So you're not ashamed of being in between a man's legs. Well, not Brad. Okay. Do we got to do the um written questions or the questions that everybody else is like reading off of the live stream questions? Uh, because everybody. There's one last one that needs to be asked and written. The last one, and that's it. All right. Okay. I'll ask that. Or should I read the one in the live stream? And I'll, I'll ask the one that's written, and we'll do the live stream. Okay. Also, since you like Mountain Dew, have you tried other flavors of Mountain Dew, such as Code Red or, I don't know, Purple Mountain Dew? I don't know. what I don't like Mountain Dew, so tell us. I, I've had Whiteout. I've 
had like you know at some point they had like uh, three flavors that and people had to vote uh, in order to know which one they they keep and I've had all three because someone was kind enough to send me a bottle each and then I had white out uh, after it was like uh, decided it'd be the one to stay I had Mandu Energy which is the European version which is actually it packs actually a lot more uh, sugar and uh, caffeine because it's an energy drink now. So it's very expensive as well. And I've had Mountain Dew Throwback, which is not as good as people make it out to be. I don't know why it's good in the first place. Doesn't it taste really salty and sugary? No, it's fucking awesome. Mountain oh, really? Dew. Really? <laughs> I, don't, um, I, I don't drink Mountain Dew. I drink Sprite, so I wouldn't know. I don't know, but I don't know. We we have sprites in France, and to me it's dull because I uh, I really know it. Whereas Mountain Dew to me is exclusive to the United States where I go there, so I think that's why I love it so much as well. But it, it tastes really good, man. You think that'd be like a French drink that Americans would enjoy if they went out to France? I don't know. Do you guys do you guys have Orangina in Fran in um in, in the United States? Uh, we have Fago. Mike, do we? Do you have uh, something? Because, like, in different parts of the United States, yeah, we have different there's drinks. yeah, there's different uh, regions of the United States that are different, and I don't think we got that. I do. You do? Yeah. Yeah. Then again, you're in California, and you're like, that's like the every state. That's the American state. But yeah, uh, t- what does it taste like, Rosie? It's kind of like a carbonated orange juice, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Huh. I don't know, but it, this is French. Uh, France. I'm not sure we have actually have like French soft drinks then that are exclusive to our country, um, because Orangina was like our only one that that's like very popular and then made it to other countries and Coca-Cola by it, so now it's everywhere. I don't know. Are you? Do you have any particular uh, like people that you like on the forums of that kind of glasses for the reviews? I don't know because I don't come to the forum. I should. I should go to the forum uh, section where people actually post their own reviews because that's where a lot of talents have been discovered. I think Todd uh, started there. Simple. Yes. Uh, usually, sometimes I will uh, ghost around the uh, blog section, but to be honest, guys, there's seven re- uh, there's seven new reviews every day on that get lessons from the contributors from the house contributors, and it's already hard to keep up with them. So um, that's why if I have spare time, I usually try to catch up with uh, my collaborators rather than actually just hop by the, the, the blogs. But I know for a fact that the big guys that, that go to essays, uh, Mike Michaud, Rob, uh, you name it, like the, the heads, uh, they actually keep an eye um, on these very closely. But as for me, I'm... Uh, I actually couldn't name something on top of my head uh, that I really enjoy on the blogs because it's been a, it's been uh, I haven't been there for a while really. So I'm sorry guys. Yeah. Well, yeah. Just a similar question. Uh, uh, out of the new open. talent, who do you enjoy? What? Like I said, out of the new pickups to that guy's glasses, um, is there anyone you particularly enjoy? I really like Own Citizen. Yes. And I also really like uh, the Sci-Fi guy. They did a review of a fucking awesome uh, Meg Battle ro- uh, movie from the 80s, which uh, it was a it was a very fun review. Uh, so I, I think there's this and that. Yeah, Owen Citizen, uh, the sci-fi guy. But obviously, you know, like if ta- if people end up on that other list, it's for a reason. Um, I remember actually that Diamond the Hagen, I haven't seen her new reviews on that good glasses, but I remember seeing some of her stuff in the blogs actually. I, re- I, I ended up thinking that it was actually very elaborate. So uh, it's, good, it's good that she actually ended up on the site. Um, okay. I, I'm not sure that Todd in the Shadows still count as new. <laughs> Even though to me he's kind of new, but. He's been uh, there for a year, so. Oh, really? Holy shit. You didn't realize that? <laughs> No, no, like to me, to me, even like I don't know. Uh, I, I mean, I joined the site in August two thousand and eight. Yeah, that's when it first started, right? Uh, well, it March first started in, in May, really. May. Um, in May two thousand eight, but then it started picking people up uh, in late July, early August. I was actually picked up the the week after Sweden Spoonie. 
And so, to me, like, Angry Joe and, and Inkara are not new, but to me, like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, I remember, like, for the first year anniversary, uh, the new pickup just, like, that, was just, that had just been picked up on the site was Juwari, who was premiering while we were in Chicago. Um, and after that, like, to me, everybody else is new. <laughs> So you mean like chicks like uh, I don't know, Obscurus Lupa and I don't yeah. know, oh, yeah. Mars Girl, and all of them are new no, to you too. Not Mars Girl. Mars Girl was here for the first anniversary, but oh yeah, she was, she was. But then, then Obscurus Lupa to me definitely count as a new one. Like to me, like uh, the fact that there's uh, Luke Mockery, Obscurus Lupa, and Tom and Shadow in the new movie, uh, to me they're the newcomers, really. <laughs> Well, that would make sense because they wasn't there during Kickassia. Yeah, they day. weren't there during Kickassia, so I still that counts. Yeah. Hopefully, they get uh, uh, Owen at the fourth year anniversary. I'd really like that. Owen and Diamond. Well, yeah, you know what? We can we can hope for that. Uh, what would be nice it would be to have everybody, which is impossible uh, to get. So um, usually, you know, they have to decide uh, to make a very difficult choice. So uh, I, I still don't know. Uh, what the cast will be for fourth anniversary because like there might be someone popping in in December that has like ton of success and it's very awesome and that everybody will like and will will be willing to see for the fourth anniversary. Uh, so we never know, you know, like anything can happen. So um, I'm just excited that there will be a fourth anniversary at all. Actually, <laughs> Ben, are you going to be at GamesCon next month? I want to buy you a, a ice cream cone. I would go just for that ice cream cone. Well, yeah, I definitely sound worth like um, <laughs> 2,000 miles, but uh, actually I will. Um, I, uh, I already have my hotel booked. I'll be going with uh, three, of, three of my best friends uh, to um, to Cologne, and I've already planned to uh, to go everywhere, cover stuff. Uh, I might have a rendezvous with Bethesda Software for a private screening of... Um, of Skyrim, or maybe even a hands-on demo. I don't know. Anything can happen. But I'll definitely be there at Gamescom, and you'll be able to uh, to see me uh, roaming around the alleys. So uh, you can definitely catch me. Uh, yeah, catch bring them ice cream. I'll definitely be eating at the McDonald's that's at the train at the train station that near just near the 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 building holding Gamescom. So at night, like at dinner time, like around seven or eight. You can see me eating at the at the, the, the McDonald's. That's pretty much a given. I want some McDonald's now. I know, right? Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> What's your favorite console? Uh, it has to be the Sega Saturn, which is everybody's least favorite console. The console nobody really likes, apart from uh, uh, Lee from Cell Gaming. Everybody likes this console, and I really do too. Uh, but it's mostly because that's the one I had. Well, everybody had a PlayStation, so it made it feel special for me because the, that's the one I could play games that nobody had heard of, and that, that turned me into the game snob that I was, that I'm today. Um, but I really love my Sega Saturn. I have three. I have about like uh, 56 games for the um, the uh, in PAL for European, and I have about 60 that are Japanese. I kind of. If you have the Uncut Shining Force 3, you are the luckiest bastard on the face of the planet. Actually, uh, Shining Force 3 US uh, was a gift by um, Cold Guy. Cold Guy sent me that for my birthday, which I'm ver still very, uh, very grateful that he sent me that because that's an amazing, uh, amazing gift. And he actually got it, uh, I think, at MacFest or at some convention where, where uh, some guy was selling it. It's a great fucking present. I have yet to play it, though. I love the first two. I haven't had a chance to play three. You guys and your geeky video games and stuff. Nerds. Is the guy who's supposed to be a game expert. I am the game expert. I have a Dreamcast, not a Sega Saturn. You just destroyed your Dreamcast in a new video. I know, and I bought another one just so I can do it again. Oh. <laughs> I'm, a, <clears throat> I'm a terrible person. I'm sorry. Yes, you are. Okay, and we got, uh, I think, like, one more good question. What's sexier, an American girl, a Latina, or a French woman? American. Well, I think that when it comes to um, nationalities, it all comes with, it, it all depends from, 
uh, it, it all depends on where you're from because what people want is not a, a particular set of feature it's something that's different to what they usually get but for example like if you go to Scandinavia like you know like uh, Norway or whatever or um, or Finland people will, people will actually and if you're because I have a friend who's a friend of brunette and mm. she's she's in Finland uh, well, she, she's she's been studying in Finland, and of course she'd get all the attention from the boys because she's the only one that's not blonde. You know what I mean? Like so, basically. Uh, no, 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 you can finish it. Go ahead. Because every, everybody in uh, in Finland is is a blonde, is a tall blonde girl. But when you're short brunette, then you get the attention of people. When you go to America, you just talk with a French accent, and girls are you know all excited because. Uh, they're tired of hearing like the same American accents. They they want something exotic, uh, and that's the same. That the same goes for me. So uh, of course I like French girls, but of course that a girl that talks in American and that's definitely like Americans to bones. Uh, it sounds exotic to me. I'm not I'm not too fond of the uh, Latino, uh, but I definitely have a soft spot for um, for American girls or. Um, Basically, like anything foreign, really makes it sexier, and I think that's uh, that's just like people liking the uh, how exotic it is to have someone first that doesn't speak the same language as you do, and uh, and actually, you know what? That's actually been a problem to me is that when I when I was a kid, when I was a kid, no, when I, when I was younger and I didn't know English, <laughs> when, I, when I wasn't as good in English as I am today. Uh, there, there were still some for, some sentences in English that I wouldn't get. You know, like I was, I was not yet fluent, had yet to be fluent in English. So when girls were speaking in English, it sounded like so much better because there, there were some words I couldn't get. So to me, English was a sexier language than it is right now. So now I understand everything, and I think that actually, as my accent is getting better, I think that girls think it's less and less sexy. Um, there you go. Um, but but I, I definitely love American girls, of course. Latinos got the best bodies. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not sure. You know, it really depends. Uh, because when you say Latinos has the best bodies, like, you know, a girl can pop out on the internet and say, I'm Latino, but she could be, like, you know, uh, 500 pounds. You never know. Oh, God. Please don't. It really <laughs> the images. It all depends on, like, you know, who uh, – on the person. Because I, I don't think, like, there's a set – um, body a type. body type per country. To me, that's bullshit. Because, of course, of course, I well, I was in Ireland, and people tended to be bigger than I was, like taller. But apart from that, like you know, the, uh, people are still different within the same country. So I wouldn't say, oh, you know what, French boys are like that, or um, really, like the only thing you can uh, bet on. Um, uh, although, yeah. Uh, I'm saying that you know it's it's different by the person really more than by the nationality, uh, apart from genitalia because it's been proven scientifically that um, European cock are bigger than uh, American ones. Oh, are they? Yeah, well, yeah, by by a good uh, half of an inch in huh. in average. Wow, I feel sorry for you, Rosie and Mike, because I mean I'm black, so I'm already I already got I'm all, I'm already set so. <laughs> What are you laughing for, Ruby? <laughs> no, I just like the fact that you're making fun of yourself and your huge, incredibly big cock. Uh, hey, I'm short, so it's the only way I can compliment myself. <laughs> so if you're short, actually, you can walk on it. <laughs> exactly. I can bounce on it. <laughs> I can bounce on my ball. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> that is so wrong. <laughs> Pretty much when you're foreign, you're sexier. Exactly. So as a French guy, I like stuff that are not French. As a, a When you're an American girl, of course you're going to like the French boy that comes around. Um, so basically, like, you get people's attention by being foreign, but it has nothing to do with what nationality you're from. Um, yeah. You could be from, like, I don't know, space, and you could still get a lot of freaking chicks. And yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, is for example, like even like if it, uh, like you don't even care about the country. I can just say, uh, especially if you say sexy, like hmm, she's a sexy Romanian, and you're like, holy shit, hmm, she's a sexy Somalian. You're like, hmm, that sounds good. 
Just because I said sexy in a different country. It's, it works with anything. I'm more picky. I like French and Irish accent. That's the sexiest two accents for me. A French guy speaking or an Irish guy speaking. That's nice. That's funny because, you know what, I was in Ireland this weekend. A um, ton of great guys, but I didn't really get why uh, some girls really thought the uh, Irish accent was sexy at all. I was like, mm, you know, that's kind of like, it's more of a rural, you know, like... Uh, uh, countryside accent. It sounds like a countryside English accent. It sounds weird uh, yeah, it to me. It was cute. nothing sexy. It sounds cute. That's why. I mean, I prefer the Dublin accent because also Ireland has a lot of different accents, and yeah. Dublin accent is my favorite one. Um, but I love Irish accents. When I was drunk in Ireland and I was surrounded by this accent, I was always like, oh. <laughs> Oh, well, you know, if you have a drunk experience with accents, then, you know, it cannot be that. I guess that makes up for any explanations, anyway. Or uh, are you planning to go to MAGFest this year? Well, MAGFest is going to be actually complicated. If I want to go to MAGFest, um, ha I have to have, like, some sort of financial compensation, because that's a big-ass trip just for a weekend, if you get what I mean. Like, you know, uh, when you're on a tight budget, because... Let's be honest, um, even being on that game of glasses, it doesn't get me Ferrari or whatever. <laughs> I don't have, you know, uh, uh, a fancy lifestyle at all. So I cannot afford to um, put $2,000 just for a weekend. Even if it's an awesome weekend where I can see friends, do panels, or even sell prints or whatever, I'm not going to, uh, you know, like this is an investment that I'm not going to get back. Uh, so unless, uh, if MacFest crew just invites me out of the blue and say, we'll play for plane tickets and accommodation, even just the plane, really, uh, I, can, I can deal with, uh, you know, buying the, uh, the, the hotel, paying for the hotel. But, but as long as I have no, like, financial aid like, or compensation for MacFest, like, I'm pretty sure I'm not going because this is a long and expensive trip, especially just for a weekend. I thought MAGFest uh, paid for everybody on that guy with the glasses to come. Nope. Nope. No, so basically you guys just all say, hey, let's go to MAGFest. We'll just have our own um, little... Uh, uh, little, yeah. little basically, maybe some of them got their uh, room paid for, even though I doubt it. I'm, not, I'm pretty sure not. Probably um, Doug and Lincara, that's it. Well, but Doug was not at MAGFest. Oh, yeah, but I'm, I mean Lincara and Spoonie, that's what I meant, sorry. Um, I'm not even sure, really. Um, but uh, what's for sure is that hopefully, hopefully they'll see that uh, a lot of people went to MacFest, especially you see the dad get less is for or a lot of people showed up at their panel. So maybe this time they'll pay for uh, for people from Dad the Glasses to come to MacFest. But if that's not the case, then I'm pretty sure I'm not going because I I don't have the budget. How much does it cost to fly across the ocean just to get to America anyway? Just for the viewers. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's a lot. Damn income tax. <laughs> okay, and I got one more question. Actually, it's more of a um compliment and just to see where you're going to be going on um later on. But basically, like I just remember, like I was just like I accidentally woke you up in the middle of the night and like you were just all like I'm trying to sleep and whatnot, and I was like, oh crap, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but basically, and I felt bad about it too because the next day Ruby was like, oh he's a nice guy. Why'd you do? That? I was like, oh I'm sorry, <laughs> I didn't. I, just, <laughs> I was just excited just to see you on there, but. No, yeah, no, that's fine. You know, uh, if uh, that was my fault for leaving Skype on, uh, well, it was like ghost. Sometimes I'm just ghosting around the internet. I don't want anybody to call me, but I I still leave Skype on in case of an emergency. So it's not people's fault to just say pass by and say hi. Of course, I'm gonna blame them for that. Holy crap, Benzai, your apartment's on fire! Oh my god, you gotta get out. Those type of emergencies. Yeah, no, well, it'd be like, you know, some some people uh, having, like, a big problem or something, you know, or they really want to talk, and, uh, and I'll be there, but if not, like, if it's not serious business, I really don't want to hear about people. But, all right, um, I'm sorry about that, uh, um, I was going to ask, like, what are your future plans? Are you going to plan on doing new series? Are you going to plan on doing more things on Blistered Thumbs? Are you going to expand in your website? Are you happy that you can, like, just, like, not do anything anymore? Just make videos at your own expense and get paid for them? 
I'm looking forward to actually September where I can be teaching again because uh, it's hard to make ends meet uh, uh, just out of great revenues, especially when you get paid in euros. Well, when you get paid in dollar, in American dollars that get transferred into euros, you already lose uh, a good fifteen uh, percent there. And then, uh, as a self-declared um, video maker and translator, I pay twenty five uh, twenty point five percent in tax of whatever I make. So. Um, it's hard to make ends meet just off the uh, the video reviewing stuff. So uh, so for now, like of course I'm happy to do that. Of course, who wouldn't like that? And it's good to be creative and yet talk about your favorite things and share it with, like thousands of people and get like and, the, and get the reward of their feedback and telling you that you're doing a good job and they want to see more. Of course, who wouldn't like to do that? Especially like getting invited to conventions, sign autographs, whatnot. You know. But on the other hand, like you know, it's not. Um, uh, it, it's not like I can do nothing but that, for now. So you're just playing. Oh, sorry. Go, go ahead. No, no, I'm done. No. So uh, I like the website to pick up. I like you know to get. I'm trying to get a steady, uh, a steady update uh, rate of uh, one update per day, so people can just check it out, like in the morning or in, at night. And see, like, just the little article that's out there. Like, usually it's a video or a feature or a, a, even just a picture. But you know, like, you check it out and then you move on. But if I could get that, um, that actually be a lot, um, a lot more, a lot of help. Uh, if I, if that could get me, like, you know, an extra income from the advertisement on the site itself, or if I could expand my own community this way, I could have vlogs that would get more attention, and so I would make money off these vlogs. Uh, for example, so any extra content like bloopers from the previous videos and whatnot. So if the website would pick up, that'd be neat things. But apart from that, I'm mostly looking to get a proper job on the site so I can still go on doing video reviews, but I have a much more stable income. So um, I was about to say something. Crap, man, I hate that when it, it just wiped my mind. It's when you mentioned that you were um, working for the site. Um, you're going to be planning on doing more things for them, basically. Like, yeah. More things behind the scenes, too, as well. Um, behind the scenes, I'm not sure, because, you know, when you're in France, you're not the one that's the most available or not, or whatever. Uh, we'll definitely uh, see that um, in the following months, but, but m mostly... Uh, as I said, I have like this uh, this thing with uh, with uh, so someone else on the side, like this crossover mini series that's gonna be pretty pretty big. I hope, um, at least I hope uh, people will enjoy it. As far as like uh, other stuff, I'm not sure I got any new shows coming up, but I'm I'm planning on doing a huge coverage of Gamescom. Uh, so that's that's on my that's what's on my mind right now. Um, then I probably will try to get a few shorts out of the way, but apart from that. At, um, in terms of behind the scene, I'm not sure because I'm not a big. Uh, I'm um, since I'm in France, as I said, um, you know, if they want someone to do executive executive work, um, they're, they're going to ask for someone else. They're going to ask someone on their same um, on the same uh, hour uh, on the same time uh, time span as they are. So for all of our um, aspiring people in the live stream and just people out there in general that will be listening to this interview, you got any, um, you got any words to tell them for aspiring reviewers and how they can make their videos better? Well, um, How to be Banzai or Benzai. Basically. Well, on how to be Benzai, be, um, just to be in my shoes, but um, <laughs> I really have like always this, this thing to say to, to people that want to start or want to do something and want to be funny or whatnot. It's just that uh, there, 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 there are a few things that I always tell myself when I do a video. It's to uh, to never release content that you don't like yourself. To never release or work on a series that you wouldn't watch yourself. Like uh, because most of the content I create is because I'm sad that I don't see this content online. I cannot find the same thing. Um, apart from of course you know. Now I'm doing a few Let's Plays here and there. It actually took me a while to warm up and do one and do a few. Um, but I uh, I always tend to do like something that I haven't seen elsewhere or uh, or that, I, you know, uh, I always tend to, to do content that I would be happy to see 
but since there's nobody to do it, well, you know, I um, I roll my sleeves and and I go for it. So that 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 that's one of the main uh, main objective I, I I set myself to. Um, apart from that, there's also uh, well the technical issues. It's like make sure we can hear ourselves, make sure we can see ourselves, make sure the editing is go uh, is uh, is nice, make sure you get a good proper software, make sure you don't have a shitty bit rate, <laughs> um, you have a decent microphone for God's sake, because I sure as hell didn't have one uh, when I started. Um, so, usually, yeah, the, 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 the usual technical stuff, really, but um, apart from that, I would tell people to, uh, yeah, be original, do content that you'd like to see yourself, and um, and also, it's all, it always helps to uh, watch your own backlog of video, like, exact, like, watching late, and, and I mean, like, watching it minutely, like, really paying attention to every detail, to uh, to see like if you get bored of your own stuff, which is a good thing because it means that you're gonna do better next time. Uh, it's it's good to be critical of uh, of yourself to uh, to make sure you always improve and that your show doesn't get stale. And that's also one thing I set myself to do. It's to try not to be too exp- um, It's try not to make it not uh, easy to expect. Uh, so so people can expect more to come and all that. But yeah, like you just say, like, um, would you advise anybody to post on Screw Attack like you first started to? Well, it's a good community. You'd get uh, uh, they have like a strong uh, community going um, going on there. So when you post something, usually you get a, a couple of feedbacks because the stream of po- a blog post is um, has a good following. I guess that'd be it, really. Um, the, even though, like you know, they kind of changed um, their editorial. Um, the, the you know the editorial tone of the whole website uh, along, um, compared to uh, when I would when I would post there, but apart from that, it's a uh, yeah. Of course, I'd recommend to post it there, but I I recommend really to post your content everywhere uh, where people can see it. Be it like game trailers, uh, other devices, YouTube, Daily Motion, Vimeo, everywhere. Facebook. Or everywhere, yeah, exactly. I mean, post like, it on your car. What you want is people to see your shit, and people that would be likely to be interested in your stuff. So, if, of course, if you're doing um, video game reviews, then you want to be uh, seen on game trailers, Degadalizes, ScrewAttack.com, RetroWare TV, Blistered um, Thumbs. Blistered Thumbs. Yeah, uh, that's why we have a blog section, but we have forums, so you can post your reviews there. Exactly. Uh, and you want to post it to your favorite video game forum if you if it's in IGN or whatever I don't care but um, you want to be po- you want to post it everywhere so um, if you could possibly do it post it on the sun then everybody could see it exactly so <laughs> so yeah po- just po- just post it as much as possible uh, there's no uh, so of course I recommend posting out script app because it's a website where people are most likely to be interested in uh, in video games. Okay, Benzai, say what you do and who you are and how awesome it was to be on Attack of the Awesome, or the podcast. Well, <laughs> well I'm, my name is Benzai, and I do videos for Dead Guy with Glasses, where I usually review video games or shitty cartoons or movies, and it was amazingly fun to be on Attack of the Awesome. Ah, you're just saying that. It's not that amazing. Is that right, Rosie, Mike, Ruby? Yes, it's that awesome. Don't be so negative. I'm not being negative. I'm being bashful. No, you, you're you always negative, and you hate us all, and... I do hate all of you, but I hate you all with love. I'm the love troll. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a doll that they would yeah, sell. Yeah, you hate us with love. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, everybody, that has been Benzai, the uh, incredible game reviewer who at first started out on Screw Attack and he just blew up back in 2007 or 2008. Uh, I think it was 2008 because I actually just started. At, the thing is that a lot of people say that I started on that on ScrewAttack.com, but I was involved in the, the G1 podcast. Back oh, really? Back. Yeah, the G, uh, G1 Attack. Uh, I was friend Ben, um, but oh, then when I when I directly started to actually do uh, to reviews, like my first ever review, which was um, 
uh, Metamorphic Force. It was posted on that day, the last is the same exact day as I posted it on ScrewTag.com and YouTube. Uh, so, r- review-wise, I started everywhere, and that's why I'm saying to post everywhere, because I posted as much as on Netgated Glasses, Retroware TV, and ScrewTag.com. And so, uh, a lot of people noticed the Solstice review came out really quickly afterwards, because it was uh, review of the week, G1 review of the week uh, on ScrewTag.com, and then... I had my Toki review being like the feature uh, user video of the week on RetroWare TV, but these these videos were posted just as well and they got, ended up being picked up on the guy with the glasses. So there's no you started there or there. So you guys got it, folks. Learn to post everywhere that you can because maybe somebody who will just be looking for you. Because I know that that guy with the glasses probably wasn't as big as it started off to be. But just post anywhere, and you might get picked up. And who knows, you might blow up in the future and just be a superstar, just like Benzai. Even though oh. I, I say that like he's like like he's rich and he lives in a big mansion. Yeah, I'm you know, rich. like it, it sets you. Uh, you no, know, um, I'm still pretty down to earth. Like it's good to have you know this Bands. many followers on this many followers on uh, on Twitter or this many P- subscribers on YouTube or this many people to comment on your video, but um, all in all, you're still just just there. a guy. And yeah, when you when I look outside, and uh, I definitely can tell that I'm not living in Beverly Hills. So <laughs> yeah, it, you it's, look it's good. Outside. And you know what? It's good to remember that you're still a small time uh, video maker, and it just uh, it's just uh, you know I'm not doing more particular works or more more outstanding work than most people. I'm just doing uh, entertainment and so that's why uh, people tend to to think it's amazing but it's, it's because they're entertaining that's a good, good thing but but it's good to remember that uh, it's just because you're an entertainer that you get that it's not because you're the best entertainer in the world or whatever mm. Ruby you were saying something yeah I said no you live in Versailles that's <laughs> every big palace in Paris yeah yeah, no, actually, I wouldn't like to live in Versailles, but no, I, uh, actually, uh, I, it, my rent is nowhere near as expensive as it would be in Versailles. Would you ever consider living in America real quick? I mean, I'm just saying, like... <laughs> well, when America will get something that's called the health care, uh, maybe I'll consider... <laughs> Sorry. But for now, like it seems that they haven't heard, even heard about it, so uh, I'll, I'll let that ID sink in. And uh, once the uh, United States gets a proper health care and a proper uh, gun law, gun control, uh, then maybe I'll, I'll consider uh, moving to America. Then again, if you moved to America, you wouldn't be considered Benzai. You would lose that French person, so that probably would have like threw away your whole image. That's actually why I'm for, um, uh, I'm glad that uh, we have Sad Panda on the website now um, because I'm not the only French guy there, so uh, people uh, get to uh, know me more as Benzai rather than as the French, the French guy. guy. Because uh, I think I, I said that also um, at Brocon when I had my Q and A panel. I said, but you know that's why I'm not the French guy with the glasses because <laughs> then it will be a shtick. I mean. And I make fun of my Frenchness, but I don't make the, I don't make that my a business card. Yeah, I actually learned to take race, well, not race, but just yeah, race and like gender, and just take that into effect because that's what people like to see. Yeah, I mean, like you know, um, it, it's it's okay for some people to do it, but I mean, if, you don't if want it to was, be you. If I was the French guy with the glasses, then. How imagine that we had like I don't know imagine Chrissy was like the uh, the black girl with <laughs> with the goggles and uh, and then Joe was like this Hispanic dude with the glasses and then you had the Texan with the guns or whatever so you know what uh, it's good that uh, I'm Benzai as Linkar is Linkar and Spoonie is Spoonie and uh, Doug is Doug um, it's because um, yeah, uh, I speak French, but that doesn't ma- that, that that doesn't define my entire persona. Yeah, you're just a nice guy who makes video games on the internet. Yeah, I just happen to be French. Yep. Yeah, but but I, then after that, I'm just uh, as, like any other reviewer. 
See, people? There's nothing like... You could just feel special about just being who you are and just not being just like a character. Exactly. You don't need a stick to be uh, amazing or different. You are different already as you are. Well, Ruby, you got any last words for us besides saying the word attacked? Yeah. Thanks, Ben, for spending so much time for this interview. That is really, 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 really nice. And uh, I think we had a fun time talking. And thanks for answering all of our questions, of the questions of the people in the forum and the people on the live stream. Mm -hmm. We really no appreciate that. And I'm looking forward to meet you at the Any Night again. Oh, yeah, and, me too. Uh, this was... Really awesome, thank you. Hey, no problem, man. You're welcome. Well, people, there you have it. Benzai. The amazing, or I shouldn't say amazing, yeah. but the guy. Not the French guy. <laughs> Benzai, the amazing <laughs> atheist. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I wish I could have asked you more about that guy, but no. Well, I, I'm amazing, and I'm an atheist, uh, so I guess that makes me the amazing atheist. And actually, you know what? The amazing atheist is amazing. Is an amazing guy, so... I thought so, you believe in Krom. <laughs> yeah, I believe in Krom. But you know, I, I get the theory that Conan is actually a flag for atheism, so, uh, so even yeah. believing in Krom makes, still makes you an atheist. Okay, now we're probably going to get, like, strikes hitting us. So before people are going to start, like, begging to ask questions about uh, religious stuff, you have been attacked yeah. by the awesome. This is the interview cool. with Benzai, and I would like to say good night, everybody. Say good night, everybody. Bye. Good night. Good night. Ruby, do it in do it in uh, Austrian. Ja, gute Nacht. Tschüss, Papa. Servus, Burschen und Mädels. Papa. See you guys. Yeah. See you. Bye. Bye. You're still here. It's over. Go home. Go.